church that God has established here. So we have something called Membership Sunday. We've never had this before, so you're all invited, and it's going to be next Sunday. And so we are catering, so make sure you sign up um, in the foyer if you want to come. Just hear the vision about what God has uh, been speaking to us about, you know, learn a little bit more, and opportunities to serve and get involved, because we believe that God has something incredible for our city. He's going to use the prophetic voice and the prayer movement that's been on this house. And so we're so honored, and we would love to have you come. Yes. Um, years ago, we launched this ministry church in 12 days. I mean, who does that, right? The Lord said to me, but this is what the Lord spoke to me and said, you're going to have a ministry for years, and then eventually you'll turn that ministry into a church. And I said, okay, so we've just been having services and prayer meetings, and it's not really been a church, but now is the time. And when Prophetess Yolanda was here last week, she said, ooh, I, like, I've been here many times, but it has never been this good. It, it's the, the people, the people are different. And I said, well, it's prayer. And so we know that now is the time that we're going to build a church. We've worked in churches our whole lives. We've, we're ministers, writers, do mentor, do all this stuff. And we've just been having services. But the Lord says now it is time to move forward. And here's one thing <laughs> what I don't like doing is, is I don't like just talking to people who don't know. We're going to start preaching truth that will set you free. We're going to start seeing signs, wonders, and miracles. And if I ever hurt your feelings, you'll, you'll get over it by next Sunday. Okay? But we're going we're gonna to preach the absolute truth and the word of God. Okay? I'm going to preach in a minute. So I'm going to stop right there. But, but it's good. And I thank you all for coming. Do you know, since you all got me rolling, do you know one thing I, I dislike about bringing special speakers in? Half the church comes the next Sunday. Okay, so you're going to get a double portion. Um, because people, they get like on a, a high and then they take a low because they just won't roll. No, baby, we're going from glory to glory to glory. L l l listen, okay, I'm going to get, is it time for the word? Okay. It's time for the word. But anyways, we really would love to have you. We're going to have Mexican food. So join us. It'll be right after church on Sunday um, in our kids' church room. And just make sure you sign up so we'll have enough food. All right, all right. Have you ever seen an unhappy person at a Mexican restaurant? I have not, okay? We're going to have Mexican food this week. Let's pray, and then we're going to dive in the Word, and we're going to see some things shift in our lives today. We're going to see some things change, and the Lord is about, to, okay, before I pray, the Lord is going to shift something in your life that is going to completely change the way you think about the gospel and the way that you think about the kingdom of God and the way that you think about yourself today, okay? So, Father God, I declare in Jesus' name this Word is going to go forth, and it is going to to absolutely change people's lives. Amen. Okay, write this down. March 15th and 16th, we're going to have an inner healing weekend. We're going to bring in Doug and Jeannie Cooper, and we're going to have a, a session on Friday night, one on Saturday morning and one on Saturday afternoon. And if you've never been a part of something like this, the reason you don't have back-to-back -back meetings is because <laughs> you're going to have to process some things. And through this, you are going to, to learn how to process things in your mind and, and in your life. You know, we have the power of the Holy Spirit, not a spirit, the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. So by having the Holy Spirit, we should be able to go to the Lord and pray and really hear what the Lord is doing and what the Lord is saying. We walk close with the Lord. We walk in the power with the Lord. Amen? Okay, listen. I want you to realize God is so good. God loves and is so, so very merciful to us. Okay? So, I want you to understand that when you dive into the Word of God and you dive in prayer and you learn the Word of God, it will change you. This Word is alive right here. This Word is powerful, and it can transform people, okay? So I want to tell you what it says in Luke 4.43, all right? This is what Jesus said. I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities. Also, because of this purpose, I have been sent. This is why Jesus was sent to die on the cross for our sins. We know that. But also he was preaching and teaching 
about the kingdom of God. A lot of people don't preach and teach the kingdom of God because they don't have a full revelation of it. It is not a message that you hear a lot, but this is the message that Jesus taught. Even in Jesus' day, he would tell parables because a lot of people wouldn't understand the word that he would teach. And so he would do parables. Even his disciples that were with him, sometimes they didn't pick up on everything that he was saying. So, so he would say, hey, remember at Jesus, different times Jesus would say, hey, how long are you going to be with me? This is what the word says. So as a child of God, we have to, as the Bible says, study to show ourselves approved. And the biggest problem that a lot of people have is they always believe everything that a preacher says. Okay, every preacher that has ever walked the face of the earth has said something wrong from the pulpit, okay? You know, and you got to understand that. There's been times that I was reading something, I said, oh, I didn't have a full revelation when I preached that before. But we grow in God. We grow in love. We grow in signs, wonders, and miracles. We grow in everything. Jesus was the master teacher, and he was always teaching his disciples. Even Peter, at the end, he said, you will deny me. How can I deny you? I've been with you for three years. Listen, just, just trust me. You're going, you, this is going to happen. And so we have to move forward with the kingdom of God and understand. Do you know why most people are lacking things in life? They don't understand the kingdom. They understand an American version of what we call Christianity. But they don't understand the kingdom. Um, I, I've been to churches. You've been to churches that, that, that something would grieve your spirit. And you would be like they would be preaching something. And I'm going to get ahead of myself. But I was preaching at an event one time. And I was blessed to have a meeting with the pastoral staff after service in a private office. Powerful meeting. Signs, wonders, miracles. People say. People feel the Holy Spirit. Everything happened. And they brought me in. One of the deacons said, I really don't agree with anything you said, but then everything you said was in the Bible. And I said, okay. And then people were saved, people were healed, and all of these miracles happened. And I said, well, it, is, it was something it's, it's from the Word. And so one of the, the young youth pastor there, he said, man, you know, I was, and he started telling me everything that he was taught. And I said, find it in the Word. Find what you said in the Word. And uh, now their preacher might have preached it like this, or they might have juked and jived. They might have had some anointing, and they might have, you know, had people rolling or whatever. But is it in the Word? No, nothing can come against the Word. And so they were, you know, they would talk to me, and this one guy said, well, my pastor, he taught me, and he said, I said, well, let's go to the Word. And so I was discipling the ministers there. Understand this. Sometimes when I go travel and preach at places, I'm not going to preach to a congregation. I'm going to minister. When we bring a minister in, some of the best times we have is when we're just conversating with them, spending time with them. Iron sharpens iron. You need to be around some people that sharpen you. If you're dull, your friends might be dull, okay? Listen, you need to be around the right type of people, okay? So Jesus came to preach and teach the kingdom. So that's what we're going to preach here at Roar. We're going to preach and teach the kingdom of God. There's a whole lot to the kingdom of God. You know, my Jesus didn't stay on the cross, and so there's more, okay? Let's get into what I got today. Um, I've been working on a book called Mindset Matters. And what would you say if I told you that people in churches will be in the same church for 10, 20, 30 years, power of God, revival service, conferences, they may even be tithers, but they never change. They never change. Why? It's their mindset that never changes, okay? Proverbs 9 and 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The fear of the Lord. About a year ago, the Lord spoke to me so strongly and said, people do not understand the fear of the Lord. Um, I think it was John Bevere. He had a me meeting with a gentleman a few years back that had the biggest ministry in the world, but he was in the penitentiary okay he didn't have a prison ministry <laughs> he, he done a few things wrong and and he's mr john bevere asked him he said why when did you fall from the lord he said oh i never fell from the lord i've always loved the lord i just didn't have the fear of the lord so i did some things that were shady because i love god but i didn't have the fear of the lord the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom when you have the fear of the lord and your heart is bent towards the lord Everything changes. So, so what is wisdom? 
Wisdom is knowing the mindset of the kingdom of God on a subject. A lot of people don't have the mindset of the kingdom. Therefore, they, they're kind of like wrong on something, that they kind of miss something. You can see somebody who's doing 95% of everything properly, and that 1-5% will destroy them. Because they don't have a mindset of the kingdom. Y- y'all have all been listening to a, I love great teaching, okay? I like good preaching, but I absolutely love a good teacher. And somebody's teaching, and everything's great, and the anointing of God is on it, and then they say one thing, and the dove left. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, whoa, what happened? What happened? Let me tell you what happened. This is how our day-to-day lives are. The best revelation of what you have on any subject is what you call the kingdom. But is it the kingdom? You know, we always share something that we think is the best thing. And and if it's not working in your life, everything in the kingdom works. Learn what was wrong in that one particular subject in your life will shift. You don't need a complete life change. If y'all don't get that, (laughs) I'm telling you, that will shift your life forever. And so you, you just need to pick one or two areas that you're weak in. Like if you're weak in finances, learn biblically what the Bible says about finances. Okay. You ever heard a wealthy person say you shouldn't preach about money in the church? No? Okay. Because there's a wrong mindset. You ever seen somebody who was miraculously healed by God in a service? You ever heard them say, let's don't talk about healing in the church. No, they've been healed. They understand it is the goodness of God that that received me to to healing. You have to understand this. So Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. To you. See, God's heart is to give you everything in the the kingdom. You could be going through the worst time in your life, and he wants you to have joy and peace, complete peace, the peace of God that passes all understanding. So many people will start moving in closer to the Lord and moving forward in life and marriage and parenting and kids and everything, and then something will come in, and they'll just, their emotions will knock them, just knock them out. But the peace of God, the joy of the Lord, Is what he's wanting to bring. That is the kingdom of God. Okay? And so we are called to be an earthly extension of the kingdom of the Lord. Heaven to earth. Matthew 6.10. The kingdom is ran by a king. His name is Jesus. Okay? And, And we are to bring this heavenly perspective to earth. So what heavenly perspective do you have? So one thing I always do, if let's say someone comes uh, against, uh, against me or anything, or if there's a financial hardship or, or if a sickness or anything that comes against me, I'll say, Holy Spirit, what are you doing in this situation and what do I need to learn? I don't like this situation, so I want to learn what you have for me to learn from a kingdom perspective. And I got to get up out of here, okay? Because I got to go. I got things to do. And so you, you learn. A lot of people go, you know, the children of Israel, it was a 12-day journey to the promised land. And it was a 40-year journey for them because they didn't learn what they needed to learn. See, what we have to do is we have to, some people pray the, the wrong prayer. I remember I was at a conference one time, I think it was in Mississippi, and I was praying, and this person told me what they were going through, and I got ready to pray, and, and the Lord said, don't, don't pray they get delivered for this. I'm trying to teach them something. This is self-inflicted. And I was like, I, I, got, the fear of the, I got the fear of the Lord. And I just said, hey, and they said, man, you know, the last three people I asked to pray, they said the Lord said don't, because he's wanting to work something out in me. They didn't, they wouldn't, they were trying to make this fit their life no no no. our life fits the word okay our life fits the word I remember the greatest prayer I ever prayed is I remember when I said I was 40 and I said Lord I'm just I'm just I'm just done with me just I'm ready to do your will I'm tired of trying to apply what you have onto what I want to do I'm just here to do what you want me to do And the Lord said, let's roll. It's time to go now. Now I've got you where I need you because you're submitted to me, okay? Listen, a lot of times we repent and we go back to the old mindset, but you have to repent and go to the mindset of the kingdom of God, all right? A lot of people, I remember I was speaking at a denominational event one time, and they gave me what they believed, and I was looking at them, and I'm like, that's, you know, salvation's good. Holy Spirit's good. That's good. That's good. That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. That's definitely not in the Bible. And they had got a little bit away from what they were believing. And, and, and just that, that breakthrough power. You can feel the presence, but just that breakthrough power wasn't there. But we're like that. Every one of us. Every day I say, God, there's something I have to learn today. Give me a new revelation on something today 
that I can walk in the kingdom perspective a little bit more because my wife deserves a better husband. My kids deserve a, you didn't say it that loud. You know, <laughs> my kids deserve a better dad. I want to be better at everything I do for you, for you. And so I have to learn the kingdom perspective of what God is doing and saying. And so you can't just listen to anything and everything somebody preaches and just write it down. Oh, that's good. And so you have to study it out for yourself. You know, most believers, they repent and they get salvation, which is great, but they don't go any further. That's it. I had a guy say, well, every Sunday you should just be salvation, salvation Sunday. Every, I said, yes, I agree with that. But, but Jesus, in Luke 4.43, he didn't say, I come just to preach salvation. I come to preach the kingdom, which is salvation and the kingdom of God. God has so much in store for us, okay? And so we have to understand that, you know, salvation is we get to get that relationship with the Lord. Then when you get the relationship, then what do you do? When, when, when a couple comes together and they get married, they produce, okay, when you get that relationship with the Lord, you're called to produce something for the kingdom. What are you producing for the Lord? What are you doing for the Lord right now? How are you moving forward and advancing what he has? And, and you know, there is a lack of teaching of the kingdom. You know what, how I know? Because you don't see signs, wonders, and miracles. You don't see the power of God manifesting. You don't hear people. Do you know my favorite thing is when you guys text me every week and, and tell me testimonies about what happened out there? And here's good, but out there is even better. Okay, when you tell me about what happened, how you tell me about how you led somebody to the Lord. Last night, some of the young people, they went out and they just started passing out flowers with hearts and different things on them. Just loving on people. That's what it is about. But until you change your mindset, you'll never change anything about your life. I'll grab a hold of this. Listen, we're called to live under a hope, open heaven. Mr. Sid Roth, I bet he's told me this three times. He said, Joe... Roar Church is going to have an open heaven. It is going to be a place where there's going to be an open heaven. You're going to see salvation, signs, wonders, and miracles, marriages restored. People come in. They're going to get prophetic words. They're going to get downloads. But this is what I want you to understand. Imagine I had an eight-ounce cup, and it was empty, and I poured an eight-ounce cup of water in it. I got eight ounces of water, right? Imagine I got an eight-ounce cup, and I poured 16 ounces of water into it. How many ounces are in there? Eight. Now I got an eight-ounce cup, and it's empty, and I get a 64-ounce big old gallon of water, and I pour, pour the whole jug in there. There's still only eight ounces in. Some, sometimes people go to church over and over and over and over and over and over, but they don't grow. You grow your mindset, you can receive more. God has more for you than you could ever even imagine. We must die. And that's what the Bible says, that we've got to die to ourselves daily and pick up our cross and follow after him. We got to die. This is, a, this is a, the way people pray. God, would you bless me? You're full. You're full of Netflix. You're full of the world. You're full of this, that, and the other. You got to die to the flesh. So when he pours, listen, the poor is always happening. The poor is always happening. I don't know about you, but in my private prayer time, I can't ever beat the Lord there. I get in, I go to the prayer chair, and he's already there. He's ready to pour out upon me. But the question is, have I emptied myself before I got there? Okay, when you empty yourself, he'll start to pour it out. Your mindset matters. In fact, in reality, your mindset actually matters more than anybody could ever realize. You ever see somebody like every two or three months, the greatest compliment they can ever give you is you've changed in a good way. You've changed. You've changed. I got a buddy. It's almost like a challenge. Every time we see each other, we're like, man, you've changed. You've changed because we're all constantly dying to the flesh, full of the word, living in the spirit, okay? And you will never grow past your level of your mindset. I was doing a business training one time, and I was telling the people there, I said, people say, teach us how to grow our businesses. I said, you can't grow your business. You grow you. And when you grow you, more people will come. See, when you start growing closer to God, more people will want to come in because you carry a stronger anointing. When you die to the flesh, that's when your anointing rises, okay? The, the more that you die to the flesh, the more that you walk in humility with the Lord, you'll walk in a powerful anointing. One of the things I felt the Lord showed me a few months back was you're going to see people who are powerful and humble. You don't see that a lot, right? You're going to see powerful men and women of God 
You're going to see powerful business owners that give all glory to God, and they're going to be humble. They're, they're going to be people that want to give. They're going to be people that want to serve. You know, I, I've seen people sit, sit in church for years and never change. Why do you go? You know, they're regular attenders. They go to revival service. They maybe go to one or two conferences a year, but they never change. Jesus was always teaching the disciples, always teaching them to die to the flesh, live in the spirit, die to the self, pick up your cross, just keep dying to yourself and live under an open heaven. When you do that, you'll walk in a favor and a blessing that you could never even imagine. In our mentoring program, I talked to three people this week that their prayer was this, I'm overwhelmed with life. If I have one more opportunity offered to me this week, I'm like, oh, that's a horrible thing. Is is so many people are offering you opportunities. And they said, I went on a fast. I prayed. I've opened myself up. And there's been times that all of us have been praying for an open door. But what if you look for, you, you have multiple doors. This is a season of opportunity. The prophetic word for the year is build, create, design. This is going to be one of the best years in a lot of people's lives, okay? The, you know, everybody has a whole list of prophetic words that, that, that have been given to you. The question is, why aren't a lot of them happening? I don't sit around and say, God, why aren't they happening? I say, God, what do you need to do in me so they will happen? God loves you so much that he's not going to open a door that will destroy you. Even though the prophetic word is on the door to open for you, he's not going to open it if you're not prepared for it. Because, because if you're not prepared for it, why would a good father hurt a child? They would not, okay? So we have to prepare ourselves for that. When we receive a prophetic word or a promise, understand there is a process that we have to go through to get there. Uh, James 1.5, 1, 1, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. It just didn't say God. Our generous God. See, God has so much wisdom, he's wanting to give you. He is wanting. The reason he, he says this in his word is because he's looking at each and every one of us and says, if you just carry the wisdom that I have for you, your whole life would be changed. Have you ever had a situation that you can't figure out how to get around? You can't figure out how to get um, your health in line, your finances in line, your marriage in line. Why am I always angry? Why am I always depressed? Why am, no, no, you just need the wisdom of God, and he will show you. Because when you ask a good father, the good father will always tell you, if you can hear from him, how to shift. That's why prophetic words are so good. Somebody can come up. Listen, never take a prophetic word if you, it's not confirmation. You have to know it's confirmation from the Lord. And when you hear the confirmation, then everything changes. Okay? Proverbs 23, 7. This is the best thing I'm going to tell you today. For as a person thinks in his heart, so is he. The word heart is the spirit, mind, and emotions, okay? Spirit, mind, and emotions, what the word heart means in the Bible. Okay, I just wrote this down, it's, and so I'm just going to read it to you. It's better read than said, okay? We teach what we know, but we reproduce who we are. Many times, we have incomplete information, and that makes us dangerous. When preachers teach the Word of God, wherever they have an incomplete knowledge, they teach an error and not even knowing it. You know, there's a lot of times that when we have the fear of the Lord, if somebody asks me a question and I don't know the answer biblically, I will tell you I don't know the answer because the fear of the Lord is a real thing. Okay? I don't want to be somebody who tries to act like they know everything. I want to be somebody who knows the Word. And if I don't, I say, give me a minute. I got a Bible and, and I can, you know, I can figure it out for you. Okay? Give me a minute. And so... I'm going to go on with this. It's something I wrote this week. When people teach anything other than the kingdom of God, they are teaching an incomplete gospel, even if they have a pure heart. They just haven't attained that part of the knowledge yet. Whenever a minister doesn't have a revelation of the kingdom of God on any particular subject, they speak on a matter of their best knowledge. Okay? In most cases, they teach things that sound good, and even may sound halfway biblical, but it's not biblical. Therefore, the people listening to them receive a partial truth. Therefore, they will only be able to produce a part of their destiny because they are malnourished according to the gospel and the kingdom of God. Okay? That's going to be one of the books I got coming up. I was sitting there. I, I, could, I can't type that fast so I had to turn on my dictation system and started talking it out because he was giving it to me y'all he was giving it to me and so that's where a lot of people miss that's one thing that I like about social media like 
if there is a minister that you want to follow healing ministry, you'd probably watch something by Andrew Walmack or somebody. And though if you wanted to know about the fear of the Lord, you'd probably watch a John Bevere video. But there's people that have something that you need. Now, let's flip the script. Every person in here has something that other people in this world need. You have to get what you have out. You have to, okay? You want to go hang out with somebody that gets you motivated? Go hang out with David. This guy right here is probably the happiest person that I know. And all he talks about is the goodness of God, the goodness of God, the goodness of God, the goodness of God. God's doing this and God's doing that. He's just so happy. He gets it from his mama. But the, the, the thing is, the thing is, everybody has something. You know, every time I talk to Rodney and Brooke, they're always talking about what's next in life. What's next? This is going good. This is going. You know, you get around people who, who have something that you need. Sometimes you may not have a word, but you may have a hug for somebody. Sometimes you don't got nothing, but you got a $20 bill, and it's for them. It's just we have to understand that we have to pour our lives out to other people. You know, Jesus, he was always about the Father's business. 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show yourself approved. A workman should not be ashamed when he is rightly dividing the word of truth. There's a lot of people that try to present the word, but they don't know the full ramification of the truth. And I don't think anybody does. Okay? That's why we have to study to show ourselves approved. Many times people enter into ministry with good intentions, but they don't make the main thing the main thing. And in, in prayer, I remember one day I was sitting with um, Apostle Dutch Sheets and some more, and, and I was about eight years ago, and they were all you know a lot older than me. And, and I just, I said, tell me one thing that you do to make sure I stay on the right road. Every one of them said prayer and fasting, prayer and, there was no hesitation, prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting, prayer and, your whole life is prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting. Never get away from the word of God. And they were telling me how much they read. I felt a little conviction. Um, they were telling me how much they prayed and how they would get up. And Apostle Dutch would say, my dad would get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. And I would hear him in there just praying to the Lord. I, I, would, I remember my dad would, do, and I said, whoa, his dad set the example of being a man of God in the place of prayer. And he said, I, and, and Apostle Dutch would always say, understand the kingdom of God. If you know the king and you're in the word, you'll know the kingdom of God. And their passion for the word was like strong. This is what we need. Okay? I love podcasts. And I love YouTube videos and stuff right here. But, you know, a lot of times you hear somebody's uh, information they got from the word. I want my own information from the word. I want to get my own revelation, okay? So let's stay in there with God. Um, 1 Samuel 15, 23. All right, y'all ready for some mature stuff? Okay, so, you know, I told you about the time I was preaching at the church, and, and they had, they didn't quite understand what I was talking about, the kingdom, but when listen, when you preach the kingdom of God, signs, wonders, and miracles always follow. Go look at Jesus. When Jesus preached the kingdom, what happened? Signs, wonders, and miracles, things would happen. And I was talking to them, and, and they didn't understand it. And they said, how come sometimes when we're teaching, we don't feel a strong anointing? How come sometimes in churches you feel kind of like a little cringe in your spirit? Y'all know what I'm talking about? And I said, y'all want the truth? And they're like, yeah. I said, okay. 1 Samuel 15, 23. For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. And every minister's done it. And if you ever talk about witchcraft in the church, people are like, how, that, that, how can that be? Well, a lot of times people may preach what they would call, an, uh, this is an old school term, an erroneous doctrine. And that would be something that doesn't fully align with the word, but it is preached as absolute truth. But it's not. Well, if it's not the absolute truth, what would it be? It would be rebellion. And what would rebellion be? Witchcraft. You ever been in a service where you feel a heavy anointing and you feel it go down? And you feel the anointing just, you just feel something? Okay. Every word that comes out of our mouth is very important. That's why the fear of the Lord is, is, is so good. M many times, um, your, your mindset matters when it comes to the word of God. And uh, I'm 49 years young, and the more I read the word, I really understand how much more I need to read the word. Like, I need to, I need to study, study, study the, the word e even more. You know, a lot of people have believed things that they have preached that aren't actually biblically accurate i remember this this is not funny but it, this gentleman told me what he believed 
and he told me he got it from his pastor, and I know his pastor's pastor, and then I was talking to him one day, and he was telling me something, and I said, sir, that's not in the Bible. Well, my college professor taught me this in, 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 in cemetery, in a seminary, and, and he was talking to me, and, and, and I said, you're talking four levels of people that nobody studied to show their self-approved. Sometimes I may mention, um, for some reason, just a, a, a scripture, just a scripture. And the only reason I mentioned it was for one person to go study it. I remember one time this preacher quoted a scripture and the Holy Spirit said, go study it. And then he said, I don't know why I even quoted that scripture. And after I said, sir, the Lord told me to go study that scripture right after you said it for me. Thank you for hearing the Lord. That message had nothing, that, that one scripture had nothing to do with your sermon, but it meant so much to me. And so don't be afraid to follow the Lord doing something that doesn't make sense. Okay? So when you go against the absolute truth of the word of God, even if you have good intentions, you're in rebellion. And the Bible says rebellion is the same as witchcraft. And so many people understand, like, like they'll say, well, this one area is not working in my life. I say, well, give me a scripture on it. Let's talk it out. It, it never works out. They never have the proper mindset of the kingdom when they're, when they're struggling in something. Well, I struggle with fear. I have fear. I have fear. I don't, no, no, you don't have fear, okay? For the Lord didn't give you the spirit of fear. If you got fear, it's not coming from the Lord, okay? And so when, when, when the enemy comes against you to try to bring in fear, if you say you have fear, you do have fear now. But I, that's not of me. The enemy's trying to bring it. The Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Fear is a weapon coming against you, but it's not going to prosper. We got to push it back, okay? And, and so we cannot walk in the, that rebellion. We have to walk in the doctrine that the Lord has, okay? We need people to understand the Word of God now more than ever. And we have to have people who have a strong mindset towards the kingdom of God. People think they can pick and choose the Word of God. They cannot. It's kind of an all or nothing type of thing, okay? Um, Proverbs 29, 25. I, I'm going to set you free on some stuff today. This is one of the biggest things that ever set me free. The fear of man brings a snare, okay? You cannot have the fear of man. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. It is better to trust in God Almighty than the strongest person, your boss, Whoever has, um, you have, some people can actually control you by verbalizing something over your life. Listen, God Almighty is your authority, okay? We, we, don't, walk in the, don't walk in the fear of man. Uh, remember, other people's opinion of you will never pay your bills. And other people's opinions of you will stop the legacy that you have for your kids. And so other people will come maybe even out of jealousy, and shoot something at you that will bring you down. Listen, if someone says something against me, and I always say, Holy Spirit, what do you say about that? And you know what he actually says sometimes? You need to listen to that person. I'm like, man. And sometimes he's like, he's like no. And, I, and then this is maturity. I say, God, where did that come from? And they may say envy or jealousy. Then you know what he says? The person that came against you, pray for them against that one thing. That is the love of God that most people don't like, okay? It's not fun to pray for somebody who comes against you, but that is the will of God. I mean, my Jesus was on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. They thought they were doing something proper, but they were not, okay? Galatians 1.10, for now I am seeking the approval of man or of God, or am I trying to please man if I'm still trying to please man you know, how can I be a true servant of the Lord? I love scriptures like that. 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we have with unveiled face, but holding as in a mirror image of the glory of God for being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. We are supposed to grow every week with the Lord. Every week we're supposed to grow with the Lord. And as we grow, you are going to flourish in everything you're called to. Do you know how many people in here have ministries outside of this place? A lot. Do you know how many people that watch online that have ministries? You, you guys are going to start businesses. You're going to create things for the glory and the kingdom of God. Whatever God has put in your heart, you're going to launch it out there because out there in the world, you're going to reach people that nobody could ever reach inside of a church. One of the biggest defining moments of my life 
is when I just say, God, I want your will. I just want your will. That's what I want for the rest of my life. Proverbs 4.23. So above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all, everything that you are. Pray attention to the warfare of your innermost being. And listen, your mindset matters and your emotions matter. When you emotionally react, you're not healthy. You have to make sure. You, I used to get mad like before I could even snap. I would get mad. I had anger issues. And one day I, I said, Lord, that one person triggers me. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, well, they know they do because you're easily triggered. So next time they triggered me, about bit my tongue off, but I was like, <laughs> I didn't say nothing. The Holy Ghost bulldogged my tongue, y'all. And, uh, and so you, you, you just got to learn that, 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 that your emotions will tell you how you really are, okay? Listen, we got to stay strong in there with him. Now, Proverbs 4, 25, it says, set your gaze on the path before you and fix purpose looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions and as you get closer to God things in your life will start leveling up the word of God will come more alive to you prayer will be more effective in your life God will start bringing the right people in your path God will start just opening doors for you Proverbs 16 3 before you do anything put your trust totally in God and not in yourself one more time before you do anything put your trust totally in God and not in yourself then every plan that you make will succeed. When you do what God has called you to, you're going to succeed. I don't care how gifted, how talented you are, you cannot fully succeed in the kingdom of God if you don't honor God with everything and give Him everything. I have a, um, we have a, a friend, she's a prophetess in South Africa, and her and her husband, they, they tithe 50%. And, and, and they're like, man, I just, I just I got to get the 55%. I got to get 60%. And they want to get more because they say, I'm always praying for these missionaries and ministries and all of these people. And I just want to constantly give. So their income keeps going up and they keep giving more. Jesus always looked at people and thought, what can I do? The, the Bible says that he was moved with compassion because he said all these people, they didn't, they didn't have a shepherd. They didn't understand the revelation of the kingdom of God. They didn't understand. And so we got to look at everybody, and everybody gets frustrated with others, but pray that they get the revelation. Pray and see what you can do in that situation, okay? Proverbs 16, 3, in another translation, it says, commit your work to the Lord, and through your thoughts, they will be established. Did you get that? It didn't say through your actions. It didn't say through your associations or how much money you have or how good looking you are or, or, or none of that. It said when you commit everything to God, it is through your thoughts. Everything will happen. Your mindset matters. And if, you're, if you think wrong about something, your reaction will be wrong. You'll be wrong in that area. But when you think properly, t today's a teaching lesson. And I'll be honest, I'm the one learning, okay? And I'll let y'all learn too if you want to. But this is what the Lord was showing me. To always clean up my thoughts, align everything with the Word of God, and everything will start to shift. And if something is not working in your life, commit that one thing to God Think properly on it, and you will watch everything shift. What if you're walking in the woods, and, and you stepped in a trap, bear trap or whatever, and all you had was just your one ankle. That's it, just your one ankle caught. You couldn't go anywhere because one small area on your body was trapped. When you're trapped with one thought and you got something wrong, God can shift it just like that, and everything. Oh, the sun is brighter. The weather's better. The grass is greener. Just about the coffee's better. Just one thought, one thing that's holding you back in your mind. Listen, the mind is the most powerful muscle that we have. Tongues number two. You get that mind right, everything falls into place. Okay? And I, I'll tell you, this is something that, that I, I try to live by. I'm not there yet. But don't ever blame anybody for anything. Don't let negativity and excuses ever come out of your mouth. You focus on what God has called you to do. 
And when you, when, you know, well, people, I've heard them say, well, it's my bosses, it was my parents, or it was my cousins, or it was my this, or it was my that. Well, on, on Judgment Day, when the Lord rolls out your blueprint he had for you, and, you know, like, hey, you know, I, I mean, I, you don't understand, Lord, <laughs> how many people came against me. And, you know, no, I want to get a, they, they said nobody's perfect, so I'm shooting for 99.99%, okay? I just want, I just want to do what God has called me to do. And I've learned that when I start walking in a, a proper mindset according to the Word of God, and here's the big thing, will you let the Holy Ghost, Pentecostals, Charismatics, the Holy Spirit, will, will you let the Holy Spirit deal with you on areas that have been grained in your mind for 20, 30, 40, 80 years? Do you know how great it is to hear an 80-year-old person said, I've always believed this one way and this one thing was wrong, and now it shifts because I'm thinking properly according to the. And if you listen to God, have you ever had somebody say, Joe, this is, I just, I just feel like you're supposed to read this book. Or you just stumble upon a video, and they teach on one thing that shifts everything. If you, if you will make yourself available, God loves you so much, he will track you down with what you need. He is so good. He will track you down with that. I had a guy call me, one of my, my, my closest friends. He just said, bro, I don't know you. You don't know me. But I felt the Lord say we were su supposed to do lunch. I live five hours away, but I'll come meet you. Holy Spirit says, you go to lunch with that guy. And uh, I said, okay. And so he drove up here. I wouldn't just go eat lunch with anybody. But this guy, and it was, we were texting before church. He gave me a prophetic word of what, what he felt was happening in our church. It was so spot on. But the thing is, he will always give you what you need if we'll listen, okay? I'm going to pray. Y'all know how we do it. The band comes up. Prayer team comes up. But I think God wants to speak to your heart today. And this is the main thing I want us to pray. Lord, and I do this every single day. Show me one thing, God, that I've believed wrong, that um, somebody preached that was good, that somebody was trying, but it just, it wasn't the truth or, you know, something that I just need my mind to, to shift on. I need to, I need to read a proper scripture on it. I need a little learning. I need some training. I need some knowledge on this. Or, you know, sometimes we've even believed uh, a lie. And we've held a grudge or unforgiveness against somebody. There's something we're holding back that if we could let go of it. Hey, hang on. I, I want to say, I wanna say one, one thing real quick. Um, I remember I was at a conference with, um, if y'all know, Chaz and Strickland and Brandon Cornelius. And Chaz and Strickland is known for deliverance ministry. I mean, he just is just known for it. And it's real powerful. And, and he, he told us, he said, man, I'm probably going to end up doing some deliverance, but I kind of hate doing deliverance because the people will come and everybody will get delivered. I'm talking delivered, delivered in these services. You're praying for somebody and just totally delivered. He said, but if they don't have proper teaching, their mind won't be right, they, they, it'll just come back. And they'll, they'll fall right back into that mindset. And so he said, you want me to do a deliverance? <laughs> he said, yeah. He said, okay, I'm going to teach you for 90 minutes. No Bible, no notes. This dude preached for 90 minutes on deliverance. We saw hundreds of people completely delivered. Okay? Don't ever, if you're ever around this guy, don't close your eyes when you're praying for a guy. And I close my eyes and I, and I thought I missed the rapture. I look and there's two empty shoes there. And this dude's about where Miss Desi's at. And I'm like, and I said, did y'all video that? I'd love to see that, that guy, just the power of God hit him. And that guy woke up and said, Jojo, hey, man. I said, hey. He said, Good to see you here. I said, I've been praying for you for five minutes. He said, I didn't even know you were here. But he got totally delivered. But my friend pulled him over to the side and said, let me teach you. And he just started teaching the Word of God. When you can teach the Word of God, people will stay free. People want a miraculous touch at an altar from God. Yes, that's good. Yes, we do that and believe in that. But when your mind is fixed on the Word, you stay free. I want people to stay free and go from glory to glory to glory because God has so much for all of us. And I believe that we're going to walk in a great season and we're going to walk in freedom. 
And when, when you get set free from something, you just feel light. You just feel like, you just, all right, God, I'm, I'm ready. And so, Lord, I just declare over everybody today that we all walk in a greater level of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding today. Lord, you said in, in all of our seeking, seek wisdom, seek knowledge. We need wisdom. Ask for wisdom. We ask for that today, God, because we need you and what you have for us, Lord. I just speak life and blessing over every person that is here today. And, Lord, I pray if any anybody 